What's up, Giants fans, Hub Watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers? It's Kush back at again with another New York Giants update video. Now, I just wanted to get a quick one out to y'all because for the rest of the day, I'm actually going to be working on another couple of vids and a bigger project for you guys. I'm sure some of you already know if you follow me on Twitter or you look at community notes tonight, there will be a very special guest on the podcast tonight. I'm really excited to have him on and I hope you guys bring all your Giants questions. I'm sure that he'll try his best to answer it. I don't really want to give it away. Uh, so I'll just keep it at that. But in this video, we're going to talk about comments that were made by Kenny Galladay and Jason Garrett um, about the Giants offense and about how it might be one to start off slow at the beginning of the season. Um, you know, and just kind of give my thoughts on that. So first right up, we're going to just start right off with a quote from Galladay himself, just talking about what he feels when he looks into Giants offense and the personnel that we have there and all that. He says, I'm excited when I look in the huddle and see all those guys. It's very exciting, but people have been in and out of camp in the lineup. So we're probably going to be a little slow to get off, but we've got some workers on this team. And I feel like if we put the work in, we can be really special. Now it needs to be noted, everything he's saying here is correct in terms of what we already know. Players have been in and out of the lineup all offseason throughout training camp, with well, Nagare being one of them, Kadarius Tony being another one of them, uh, Kyle Rudolph being another one of them, John Ross being another one of them. You know, people have really been in and out of the lineup throughout the entire offseason. Uh, the only guy that I could think of that's been there very consistently would be Sterling Shepard. I think Slayton as well has probably been there all offseason. Um, Ingram only now has had a little bit of an injury. But he's very correct in this statement. <laughs> we haven't had a the all of the weapons out there and Jason Garrett hasn't had really his guys out there for him to correctly run this offense and get them their chemistry and get them the practice that they need. So if Galladay is over here saying we're probably gonna start off a little slow, it's not that far of a stretch. But I will say this, we can't have that happening. <laughs> we can't start off the season this week against Denver with an offense that only puts up 17 and a half points a game. That's what we were last year. That was 31st in the league for the second worst offense in the league. The only team that was worse than us were the New York Jets. We can't go out there and have our offense ruined by poor offensive line play as well. You gotta plan around it. I've seen so many offenses in the league that have tried to plan around a bad offensive line and that have successfully done so. For some reason, it is only the Giants that can't seem to build around their players' strengths. You know what I mean? Like, we, if, if our offensive line is really going to be that bad, then guess what? We're going to have to have plays where there's more people on the line blocking. We're going to have to have a lot of jumbo sets. I don't know what to tell you, but we've all seen in the NFL, for example, last year, Chargers, they worked around their terrible offensive line. Of course, their rookie quarterback, Justin Herbert, had a good amount to do with it. Extremely talented guy. But the offense they were calling, whoever their offensive coordinator is, is a very smart guy. He worked to the strengths of the guys on the team and he called plays that made sure Herbert could get the ball out quickly or called plays that helped out his offensive linemen so that way they'd have a little bit of extra time, they'd have a little bit of extra blocking and thus they'd have a little bit of extra offense. The Giants need to do this. Jason Garrett needs to do this. Even Freddie Kitchens has said this when somebody literally asked if the Giants would adjust their game plan because of the O-line. And Freddie Kitchens said that's more Jason's call there to answer that question. But I think ultimately on offense, you try to do what your players do best. And that's what we try to do here. Joe Judge has even said it before. It's always about playing to your players' strengths. You go in with your base playbook and what you're going to install and what you're going to build on. But then you start finding out little by little what you really do well. We started out last year with a outside stretch zone runs and we found that as we went through the year hey look we're better going downhill that's something that we emphasized of course i think one of the reasons they probably start off with outside zone runs just a quick comment on that was because saquon loves to run outside rather than go up the middle but if he starts going up the middle this year man i would be happy and of course that relates to this overall topic of players being in and out saquon was a name i completely forgot to list because it's just so been ingrained in me that he's been out with his injury of course I do think he's healthy. I'm not sure how much he's going to get week one. Hopefully it's a good amount, but all that affects 
whether or not this offense is going to start slow um in regards to judges quote garrett said this he said we'll always evaluate what we think is best for the o-line for the tight ends for the receivers the quarterbacks and the runners and try to put them in the best situation as we try to put a plan together and call a game whatever plan you do put together garrett regardless of who's going to be out there we need to change up the way that we call this offense from the way it was last year now of course i've, I've given many excuses to everybody on the offense last year i've given the excuse of no preseason no real offseason i've given the excuse of garrett's pass catchers couldn't get separations and whenever they did they couldn't catch the ball i've also given an excuse to those receivers and said garrett didn't necessarily call plays that allowed them to get the separation needed in a football game of course the offensive line has excuses as well well guess what this time there are no excuses for the line for the receivers for Jason Garrett we have upgraded so much we have put so much money into this offense that as a Giants fan I feel like we need to see results and I do think that we will have some of our weapons in there um I do think for example Kyle Rudolph will play we will have Sterling Shepard we will have Darius Slayton I do think we're gonna have Saquon Barkley in some capacity Kenny Galli, I'm really not too sure on. Kadarius Tony, I'm really not too sure on. So you're talking about your number one receiver and then the explosive guy you just drafted. So that is going to be kind of a hit, but you still got everybody else and you can still definitely work around that and put up, let's say, 24 points with that. What is that? A touchdown more than we had last year. That's all we really need because this defense is going to do its job. This defense is going to come out they're not allowing the broncos they're not gonna allow any team we go up against to put more than 30 points on our head and then specifically to the broncos since we're basically at week one i don't think they're allowing more than 21 points man i will be very very surprised if they do we will allow them to move the ball up and down the field that's just the type of defense we are Bend not break we saw it all last year we saw it during the preseason but when we get in the red zone they're not gonna score that's just the giants defense so our offense is gonna have to come through our offense is going to have to put up 24 points. That is what it is. Jason Garrett talked about it when he said um, that we needed more explosive plays. He was talking about the preseason, and this is what he said. We had two 11-play drives in the final preseason game and a 9-play drive. Those are positive things. Both you and I know we need to make some explosive plays. That's what leads to scoring, so we have to find a balance for what that is. So it's obvious that they want to have these long drives that drain out the clock. You know, probably short passes, short runs and whatnot. I mean, if it works, it works. I have no complaints. But he's definitely right that we need a bit more explosive plays. He needs to call some more vertical stuff. We've all complained about his play calling and route running and whatnot. The receivers we got that I listed without Galladay and without Tony, they're good enough to put up 20 points, bro. Like, let's not kid ourselves. They are. It comes down to the routes that are going to running and the offense that Garrett's is going to be clean. So that's what I got for y'all today. Let me know what you guys think. Am I being a little too harsh? Am I being a little too demanding? Or am I being just right? Because I think that we have the personnel to be able to score. Um, I don't really buy into this offense starting off slow because if our offensive coordinator does a really good job, he can compensate for what we're missing. And it's not like we're going to be missing those pieces for long. And honestly, all we're going to be missing, in my opinion, is probably going to be Galladay. If, if you're telling me that this offense is going to score 17 points without Kenny Galladay, then we simply didn't do enough to fix it, or we simply don't have the right set offensive coordinator. That's it for today, guys. Let me know what you think. Put your thoughts down below. Like, share, subscribe, and I'm out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll catch y'all in the next one.